will be haunted by three spirits. Expect the first tonight when the bell tolls one. Shouldn't I take them all at once and get it over with? Expect you? the second when the bell tolls two. The third when the bell tolls three. This play is uh, timeless. Most theaters of our size and larger produce it every single season. This will be the first time for us in seven years. How many times have you danced since? Never. Clearly it's a tale of redemption, and there's also this sense of the artist in society and the fact that Scrooge has lost his passion for living, really, and his connection with human beings. Your love for me is one thing, but there is another love. It is one of the most moving stories uh, about a man who has really uh, separated himself from society by his wealth, by choosing to keep his wealth to himself. What's wrong with that? Making money isn't against the law, is it? It somehow magically combines being a ghost story and a miracle play and a mystery play uh, and a precautionary tale. It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk among his fellow men. We're doing it fairly traditionally, but it's, it's got some new little tricks to it, which I won't give away, but it's really very classical and it's very traditional with some twists that just make it a lot of fun. For those who, who are you know, Christmas Carol aficionados, I'm hoping that this one takes that gorgeous gem that is this story and just turns it slightly so that they're looking at this, this gem through another facet. How do you do, Mr. Scrooge? Very well, thank you. Do you understand now, Mr. Scrooge? No, sir. <laughs> this is uh, a script that we've never produced before. Uh, it's got 20 songs in the production, uh, so it's very music-filled. Because we have to go to so many different locales, um, the set is fairly open. And, um, there's, and there's minimal pieces that come in to tell location. So when you have a set like that, the costumes become very important because they become the color and the interest and the things going on on stage. Scenically, it's going to be, you know, it's not, it doesn't look like a Hallmark card. It doesn't look like a, uh, a, a, a department store window. It's very spare. Uh, I wanted to focus very specifically on telling the story not as a generalized Christmas story, but one that takes place during Christmas very poignantly. It's a place of transformation and of discovering the child in all of us. Even though I've done Christmas Carol four times, it's something new every time. It may be the same story, but the costumes, maybe they'll change the time period. As many avatars as this one, as many different versions, there's going to be somebody who has a favorite one that's going to say, well, it didn't quite match that or match this in my favorite one that's close to my heart. But hopefully what it will do is say, oh, that's something in this play that I never noticed before. I am the ghost of Christmas past. It's been seven years, there's a lot of kids that have grown up in central New York and have never seen a live production of A Christmas Carol, and it's time.